Now let's see how to derive the number of self-dual functions possible. So for that let me take the example it will be easy. If I take the example and derive it it will be easy. Let us say I have three variables a, b, c then how many combinations are possible 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1, 1. These are all the min terms possible, total min terms possible, right? Now in these min terms, let's just number them, it will be convenient for me to represent it. It is 0, it is 1, it is 2, it is 3, it is 4, it is 5, it is 6, it is 7. Now check the min term 0, which means 0, 0, 0. What is the mutual exclusive term for that? The mutual exclusive term is 1, 1, 1, isn't it? If this is the min term 0, 0, 0, then the mutual exclusive term is 1, 1, 1, right? So I am just keeping them in a pair, 0, 7. These two are mutually exclusive, right? And similarly, if I have 0, 0, 1, what is the mutual exclusive term? 1, 1, 0, which means 1, 6. And if I have 0, 1, 0, what is the mutual exclusive term? 1, 0, 1. So which is nothing but 2 and 5 are present in one pair. And now if I have 0, 1, 1, the mutual exclusive term is 1, 0, 0. So which is nothing but um, 3 and 4 are in one pair, right? So now in order to form the self dual functions, one thing is the number of min terms should be equal to number of max terms and moreover, if we have assigned a 1 to a term, then you should not assign 1 to its comp, I mean the, you know, uh, what is what is that called? Uh, the expression is uh, complement, right? Mutual exclusive term, sorry. So if you, uh, the terminology is like this, the mutually exclusive term to 0 is 7, the mutually exclusive term to 1 is 6, right? So the concept is like this. Now the number of min terms should be equal to number of max terms, which means there should be exactly four ones for any you know, self dual function and second thing is if you assign a one to any min term then you should not assign one to the corresponding mutual exclusive term which means if I assign one to this you should not assign seven to I mean one to seven right. So now other way of forming it is what I do is I will make all the terms into pairs in such a way that each pair contains a min term and its mutual exclusive term and now I form a function. How can I form a function? I could choose one of them and I had to choose exactly one of them. So from 0 and 7, I can choose only one. So you could either choose 0 or 7, therefore 2 chances are there and you can choose 1 or 6, 2 chances are there and you can choose 2 or 5, 2 chances are there and you can choose 3 or 2 chances are there. What does it mean is, if you can, you can pick 0 here, 1 here, 2 here, 3 here, it will definitely be a self dual function. The reason is number of min terms equal to max terms and then no to uh, a, no, a, a variable, a min term and its mutual exclusive term is not present, right? So just to make sure that this happens, I, what I am trying to do is, I am going to make them into pairs, a min term and its mutual exclusive term. After making them into pairs, how many such pairs I got here? Four pairs. Now from each pair, I have to choose exactly one element in order to form my function. Therefore, my function will have how many chances is, one is it can, it has two choices here, two choices here, two choices here, two choices here. Therefore, how many self dual functions are possible here? 2 power 4, which is 16 self dual functions are possible if I have three variables. Now, if you look at how I derived it is, uh, first of all, I have written the entire table. Then, how many rows will be there in the entire table, which means if I have n variables, n variables, then how many uh, min terms are totally possible? 2 power n. Then what I did is, I have paid each uh, each uh, min term with its mutual exclusive term. Then how many pairs are possible? Number of pairs equal to 2 power n minus 1. Now after taking all the pairs like this, from each pair, I have two choices to make the function. Therefore, I can write 2 into 2 into 2 into so on. 2 power n minus 1 times, right? Therefore, what do I get? I get 2 power 2 power n minus 1, like this. 2 power 2 power n minus 1. So, try to understand this. How do I get this 2 power n minus 1 is? I have 2 power n rows, out of which I am taking the pairs. Each pair is going to contain either a min term, I mean a min term and its mutual exclusive term. Then how many such pairs I got? 2 power n minus 1. 
now once i get all this once i got all these pairs then my function is going to include one of the element from each pair and definitely one should be included otherwise the that rule what is the rule it has to be neutral right that rule doesn't satisfy so uh, therefore i have these many pairs and every pair is giving me two choices therefore how many functions are possible 2 into 2 into 2 into so on number of pairs times how many pairs are there 2 power n minus 1 therefore total number of functions is 2 power 2 power n minus 1 this is the formula for the total number of self-gl functions possible with n variables got it so just remember it the number of self-gl functions possible is these many now we have already seen that there is something called as neutral functions how did we find the neutral functions just see this we have already seen the neutral functions neutral functions is nothing but if i have two power and min terms i have to exactly choose half of them to be present in a function then how many functions are possible from two power and min terms i have to choose two power n minus one so this is nothing but the number of neutral functions and now uh, two power 2 power 2 power n minus 1 is nothing but the number of self-dual functions. Which one do you think is greater? So what is the relationship between self-dual functions and neutral functions? If a function has to be self-dual function, first of all it should be neutral function. But then if a function has to be neutral function, it need not be self-dual function. Which means if you look at this set, let us say it is set of all neutral functions, right? Then the set of all self-dual functions will be here. Therefore, every self-dual function is a neutral function but then every neutral function need not be a self-dual function got it this is the relationship between neutral functions and self-dual functions right so uh, obviously this number will be greater than this number because this is a set of all neutral functions possible but this is just the set of all yes for some value of n it might be equal but once you grow the size of n this number will be greater than this number because every neutral function cannot be a self-dual function got it one, cl one clear example, see if you want to know any example of a neutral function which is not a self-gl function, maybe you can take you know a function to be like this. If you include, if you include a term and its mutually exclusive term inside the function like this, let us say the, if I include 0, along with 0 if you include 7 also and then 1 and then 2 right a function is a min term is present and its mutual exclusive term is present here itself it failed therefore it, this function cannot be self-dual function right but it is a neutral function why because out of eight min terms you have chosen four min terms therefore every function which is neutral may not be a self-dual function but then if a function is self-dual it will definitely be a neutral function right keep that in mind